So what we're going to be doing things like securing access to the command line interface and console ports. Using encrypted and plain text passwords, you'll also learn how to configure messages for users logging into the switch. These message banners are also used to warn unauthorized users that access is prohibited. By the way, this is some text you could probably use to answer one of the questions that you're going to find later in this document. We've got a couple of desktop PCs now, PC1 and PC2. PC1 is connected to switch S1, which is a layer two switch, meaning it doesn't do routing, but you're gonna learn all about layer two in module three. And we've got PC2, which is connected to switch S2, also a layer two switch. And then the two switches are connected to each other back to back. The dashed black line indicates this is a copper crossover cable, which again, more of a legacy thing because we have something called auto MDIX now. And you'll learn about that in module three too. Oh, no, no, that's module four. Um, S1 and S2 are connected because they are the same type of device. So they're connected by a crossover copper cable. And then PC1 and PC2 are using a straight through copper cable to connect to their respective switch. Let's see what it wants us to do. The first thing it wants us to do is click S1 and this, they're not going to mess around having us use a terminal emulator. We're going right to the nitty gritty, to the CLI, the command line interface. We have a kind of a shortcut to do that. So once we do that, we're going to see the switch prompt. This is factory settings. So the first thing it wants us to do is enter privileged exec mode, which we use the enable command EN for short. Notice that our prompt changed to reflect privilege exec mode, which also looks similar to that Linux super user prompt. Now it wants us to examine the current switch configuration because we have to be in privileged exec to do this. And the command to do that is show running config, which we can type RUN tab, or we can simply type show run for short, or I believe we can show R for short. Yeah, we can. So the first question is, how many fast ethernet interfaces does the switch have? So we have fast ethernet zero slash one through fast ethernet zero slash 24. So how many does the switch have? 24. 24, that's right. And a fast ethernet interface is 100 megabits per second bandwidth. A megabit per second is a thousand bits per second. Again, you're gonna learn this in this week's materials. The next question is how many gigabit ethernet interfaces does the switch have? So if we scroll down a little further, how many gigabit ethernet or giggy for short, cause I have a hard time saying that. How many does it have? There's zero slash one. Again, the first, so the module is zero. And then on that module, there's ports one and two. So we have just two gigabit ethernet interfaces on the switch. There's more fast ethernet because those are gonna be more for the end devices, the users and things. And, th and there's only two gig E on this particular model because on this model, those are more used for uplinks to connect that switch to an intermediary device. So there's two of those. By the way, a giggy, it's a thousand megabits per second, or that's a thousand million. So that's a billion bits per second. So that's, that's why you're using that to connect to your intermediary network device to get connected to the rest of the network. The next question is, what is the range of values shown for the VTY lines? So that would be here. So that would be zero through 15, right? Or you could say zero through four and five through 15. Either one would be correct. So that was the command to show the running configuration that's in the random access memory, the volatile memory. What command should I use to display the current contents of non-volatile random access memory or NVRAM? Be a show command, right? The show starting config. Yeah, so I can just type STA and tab or show star for short will work. It says startup config is not present. Why isn't there any config there in non-volatile RAM? Because we haven't saved anything to it yet. Yes, thank you. We're at factory settings. The switch is just out of the box. Nothing's been changed on it yet. 
So nothing has been written to flash, it's sometimes called, or non-volatile RAM by means of saving and making that current volatile configuration permanent so that if the switch is powered off and on or something else happens, that we don't lose it. So right now we would lose any configuration that we have if the switch were to, to reload. So that would be the, the last answer to that. The next thing it wants us to do is start creating a basic switch configuration. And it's gonna walk you through how to um, enter these commands. To do anything, we have to go into configuration mode and you have to be in privileged exec mode to do that. So you can type configure terminal or for short, you can just type C-O-N-F space T. And it wants us to set the host name to S1. So we type in host name S1. And at this point, we want to get back to the privileged exec line. So we're going to type exit. Now, the next thing it wants us to do is to secure access to the console line. Because right now, there's nothing stopping anybody getting access to this switch. So it wants us to go ahead and secure this console access line. So we're going back into configure terminal mode. And now we go into line mode because our console and our VTY lines, we use line mode. Line, which line? Console, zero. You have to put the zero even if there's only one. And it wants us to set a password. Let me in. By the way, you have to make sure not to have typos in these because the packet tracer scoring will only give you the, the points if, if you have it spelled right. So the passwords let me in. Now, before I put the login command, which goes hand in hand with the password, I just want to demonstrate something. If you put a password and you don't have the login command to accompany it, it will actually still let someone access the, the console. So if I go all the way out now, I'm completely out and I hit return. As you can see, it will still let anybody and their brother who wants to access the switch to access it, even though you saw me type in the password. That's kind of a misconception that, that's pretty common about the command that, that I just entered, which is the password command. Without the login command, it will still allow someone to connect. The login command is to activate password checking. So now let's go back in and add that login. Okay, so now if I go back out, there it is. So adding the login command actually activated password checking. And this is, that's why you always have to have the two together. So the password is let me in and we're in now. Step three is to verify that, which I just did. And the next thing it wants us to do is set the enable password. And that's because we want to protect all those advanced commands that can change the configuration of the switch. So it says set the enable password to C1 dollar sign C0. Again, you got to watch the spelling so you get your credit. So we go into privileged exec mode, configuration terminal mode, and we're going to set enable password C1 dollar sign C0 and exit. And then this is the password to get into the switch. And now I've got C1 dollar C0. Can't quite type that one as fast. So there we have it. We have configured the passwords. We're starting to secure. Security happens in layers. We're setting our layers of security. So now when we show run, we see our password and it is in plain text. So if someone's looking over your shoulder or what if they got access to a, a config file that someone had created and put in a backup location. So just to kind of make it harder to access the switch, we're going to change the enable password, which is plain text, and use a better security measure, which is enable secret. And this one, we're going to set it to it's a secret. And there's a note here, which is good to know, right? The enable secret password overrides the enable password. If both are configured on the switch, you have to have and know the enable secret password to enter privileged exec mode, which makes sense. So now we want to make sure that that was added to the configuration file by once again doing a show run. In your document, it says what is displayed for the enable secret. That's a very long string. 
because it's been encrypted. And finally, why is it displayed differently? One is encrypted and one, one isn't, basically. The enable secret is shown in encrypted form, whereas the enable password is still shown in plain text. We really want all of our passwords to be encrypted form, no plain text. Again, security being a concern there. So let's look at another command. This is a command that's important because what it will do anytime a password is set, whether it be on a console, a VTY line, anything on this device, we wanna use the service password encryption command. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. And you can type serve and tab and something like PAS and tab, or you can abbreviate it. Now, remember before we had the enable password was in clear text, as was the console password. So let's go back and look at our running config now. So by typing the service password encryption command, it went back and it actually did us the service of going ahead and encrypting passwords that were entered in the past, such as the enable password and the console password. So the answer to the next question is, if you configure any more passwords on the switch, will they be displayed in the configuration file as plain text or in encrypted form? So what would the answer to that be? Will there be any more plain text passwords displayed in the config file going forward now that we've turned on the password encryption service? They'll be encrypted, right? Existing and going forward, they will be encrypted. That's a, that's a good security measure to do. Okay, the, in part three, the next thing it wants to do to help secure the device is to configure a message of the day banner, which is a feature that will allow you to configure a message that someone will see if they're logging onto the switch. Let's see if it'll let me copy and paste this. It did, it just, I had to do a control C over here. I'll do a control A to go to the beginning of the command line. That's a shortcut, B-A-N-N-E-R space M-O-T-D and then exit. So when will this banner be displayed? Go all the way back out of the switch. It's not showing right now, is it? But if I hit return to get started, so that's when it's displayed. It's displayed when someone accesses the switch through the console port. And in, in this case, to be more specific, it was when I press enter or return to get started. Okay, we, we wanna look at our configuration. Does everything look okay? Our passwords are encrypted. We've got our banner message of the day so far that we were doing. We got our password on our login on our console. So everything looks good. So now we've configured the basic configuration and we wanna back that up to non-volatile RAM or flash to ensure that that's not going to get lost if we have a power outage. So the command to do that is copy running config to startup config. But it wants to know what's the shortest abbreviated version of the copy running config startup config command that it's not ambiguous. So if I type C and then tab, I, nothing happens, O, P. So COP for copy. For running config, if I type R and then a tab and it fills that out for me, I know that it's not ambiguous. So cop R, is it S? No, why is that? So I'm gonna put a question mark after the S and that shows me that there are two possible subcommands or keywords starting with the S. To make it unique, I'd have to type the T there. So the shortest abbreviated version of the copy running config startup config command would be cop R S T. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. This is the default, just hit return. So the file name is going to be called startup-config. What command will display the contents of NVRAM? Show what? You startup config, right? And there it is. So now we do have a file of config commands saved. We have our passwords, we have the console commands, and we have the message of the day. So yes, they were. So that answer would be yes. And finally, in step five, it wants you to go through 
and do the same thing on switch two that you just did here. So we're done with switch S1 now, although we could keep that window open to use as a comparison. Help us out a little bit. So it says go to S2 CLI. And it says, go ahead and configure S2 with the following parameters. Device name S2. So I go into privileged exec mode by typing enable or EN. I have to go into configuration mode, configuration. So configure, if you hit return, it'll ask you, return for terminal, or I can just type CONFT. But what's the, what's the command to set the, the, host, the device name to S2? Host name, right? Host name or host. S2. This is switch S2. Our prompt immediately changes to S2. And we want to protect access to the console using the let me in password. So that's a line command. We have to go into line configuration mode. What line? Console zero or con zero. We have the password command. Let me in is the name of the password. What goes hand in hand with the password command to activate password checking so that it will actually apply? Login, right? Login. Then it wants us to set the enable password, C1 dollar sign C0, enable secret. It's a secret. This is the one you have to use going forward if you want to go into enable mode. It wants us to set up a banner message of the day. In this case, they're using dollar signs as the delimiters. We can just say um, whatever we want to say. Those dollar signs are not going to show up in the message. And finally, to encrypt the password, service password encryption. Now, just try to remember these commands because they'll be showing up um, in future packet tracers. And then finally, if we show startup, there's nothing there. So we have to make sure to copy the running config to the startup config, accept the default value, show startup com config to verify everything looks good. And now if you go to your instructions, you'll see a button here called check results. This is important because before you turn in your assignment, you want to see, and I'm going to close these consoles. It'll say, congratulations, you completed the activity. And then if you go to the assessment items tab, this is all the things that are being checked and graded within the packet tracer. And over here will be your score. And I know that's kind of small. If you don't get a 72 out of 72, then you can actually go to show incorrect items and it'll show you what you got wrong. And you can go back, troubleshoot the problem, see if you can find it. You can go back through and correct anything. And then right now you can just close that by clicking close. But then you can go back, check your work. If you fat fingered a password, for example, let's say, on S1, let's say I change the enable password to enable. So now if I go back in to check results, it says you did not complete the activity. Please close this window and try again. It tells you if you go under assessment items and it tells you, oh, here's what you got wrong. The enable password is wrong on S1. So the name of the device is here, and then the subcategories are the different items on that device. So you can go back and then that would give me 68 out of 72. But if I close this window, go back to S1 and correct that, then I'll be good to go. Okay, so I go back to check results and everything's good to go now. Got the full points. So so make sure, you know, that that you get the maximum amount of points that you can before you turn this in because that is part of the grade. And once you're happy, close out of that window and you can go up to file. Let's just do save as. Just save it as a .pka extension. You can put your name in there or you can just accept the default name. If you put your name or something else in there, that way you can tell that this is the completed one though, if, in case you've got multiple copies so that you don't accidentally turn in one that's, that's not done. So just save that 
and put that in the Dropbox as well as your document.